The story of this manhwa starts at a school in what seems like an ordinary city. A commotion is going on inside a classroom in the Fifth Academy. Students are waiting eagerly for their awakening and rank determination. Everyone hopes to achieve an awakening of a rank but they know it is just wishful thinking. There are fewer than 1,000 people above a rank in the entire world. Some students are more relaxed than others and talk about a senior who had awakened an S-rank ability last year. They talk about their ambitions and ideals but one student is busy with something else. He is looking at his smartphone and wondering where can he get money to sustain his family. His parents are dead and everything they had left has been used up. He can come up with only one idea, he will have to enter the demon territory soon. His name is Zhang Zi, but that was not always the case. He lived in another world, a peaceful world without magic and monsters. But ten years ago, he came to this world due to a dimensional rift. He was adopted by the Zhang family and they gave him a new home and a new name. They were a loving family and he even had a little sister. But that happiness did not last. Twenty years ago, wormholes appeared all over this world and from the wormholes came terrible monsters. They were agents of destruction and chaos. They were not affected by human weapons and it seemed that all hope was lost. He lost his adoptive parents to a monster attack. They died a gruesome death at the hands of the monsters and he could only run away with his little sister. But Zhang Zi had come to the world ten years after that incident and it was still safe for humans in some parts. When the humans could not kill the monsters in their home, they retaliated by entering the wormholes into the demon territory to kill them. It was a desperate attempt, but people who went and found that they could grow stronger there. And that power was not lost when they returned home. This led to a systemic revolution in human tactics against the monsters. The countries sent their best warriors into demon territories so that they could increase their power. And they obtained good results. The people who grew stronger inside demon territory were called hunters and classified into five levels and seven ranks. The system of ranking was managed by the Monster Territory Hunter Association, an international organization. The five levels were the indicators of the strength and skill of the hunter while the ranks depicted the strength of their awakened talents. The ranks from D to SSS defined the potential of a hunter. But only people who could awaken talents of a rank or above could become successful hunters. Zhang Zi wants an a rank talent so that he can become a hunter and earn enough money to support his sister. He goes back to his home to find that his sister was trying to prepare something good for his birthday but failed miserably. Only on the 18th birthday, a person could awaken his talent. Zhang Zi was going to dim in territory at night for the same reason. The siblings love each other very much and take care of each other whenever possible. Zhang Zi's sister decides to go to her friend's house to study while he is in demon territory. But it is not as terrible as it sounds to enter the demon territory for awakening one's skill. It will all happen at the house of the students using their special watches. Zhang Zi gets teleported into the demon territory by a magnificent wormhole and finds a tiny fairy waiting for him. She was his fairy guide who would help him with the procedure. She asks him what name would he choose to be called as a hunter and the outfit he would like. He chooses the name Rakshasa and a masked outfit. He had read about the demon territory and had decided on these options. The fairy uses her power and he is in the outfit he wanted. He is shocked but has no time as the fairy informs him that his talent would now be assessed. She brings a crystal ball in front of him and his talent will manifest when he places his hand on it. He hopes that it is a rank and is surprised when he feels nothing after the crystal glows and returns to normal. But the fairy can see his talent and is flabbergasted by what she sees. His talent is SSS rank summoner. Zhang Zi cannot believe it and asks her to confirm what she just told him. She has made no mistake and he can check his skills and status in the window she operates. The fairy tells him that she has only heard about his skill in the myths about hunters. This was the first time it had actually manifested. Zhang Zi feels confident that with an SSS rank talent, he could make a good living and would not have to worry about anything. The fairy shows him the details of his skill. He can summon any monster after he kills it once and can also level up the monsters up to level 5. The number of monsters he can summon at a given time depends on his level as a summoner. But other than his extraordinary skill, he does not have anything to boast about. His strength, speed, mental fortitude and other stats are just average. He is a little disappointed by seeing them but he hopes that he can level up soon and become much more powerful. The fairy congratulates him and sends him off to the demon territory. It appears to be a peaceful mountainside at first glance. A gigantic stage is set up and it is surrounded by towers emitting lightning. A lot of newbies like Chang Zi are there and their instructors ask them to gather around. There are two instructors. Both of them look tough but they are not wearing special clothing or protective gear. They will explain everything vital for their first mission soon. Zhang Zi is intimidated by the huge crowd he finds there. A man is boasting about his rank skill force fist and the others are comparing how they fared in the awakening. Their chatter is cut short by the instructor's announcement. It is time for them to receive their first weapon. The instructors tell them to beware of everyone, monsters and humans alike. This was the reason Zhang Zi chose a mask with his outfit. Their lives will be on the line and the altar they were at right now was the only way to go back to their planet. Zhang Zi's turn comes and he registers his rank as D. He has taken the advice to beware of humans quite seriously and wants to hide his real ability till he gets strong enough. 
but the people behind him in the line think that D-rank people should just return home. He chooses a bow as his weapon. It would give him an advantage in range and safety, but he is not good at it either. He realizes he will need a lot of practice before he can use it, but one of the instructors seems to notice him. The other instructor checks the list of the newbies and finds that the quality was lower than last year. Zhang Zi starts practicing his aim in the designated area and after some time he perfects his aim. His rate of hitting the bullseye increases and he decides that he is ready to go fight some monsters. The monsters on different levels of demon territory were already known. Zhang Zi had studied about them and knows which monsters he will face. On the first floor, there were violent rabbits, fast but weak. Then there were lava turtles, slow but with high health and armor. The floor boss was the dark shadow wolf who had great speed and power and could also inflict burning and bleeding damage on its target with the skill rip. A few newbies are being chased by a lava turtle. Though it was considered slow, it could still catch up to them. Zhang Zi saves the life of one man by distracting the turtle with his arrows. The turtle chases after him and Zhang Zi leads him to the altar. The towers use their lightning on the turtle as it comes close to the altar and its health is reduced greatly. Zhang Zi takes this opportunity and launches continuous arrows at the turtle and kills it. The large body of the turtle disappears and turns into a small ball called Low Rank Energy Magic Soul. Monsters drop different magic soul orbs when they died and the hunter could absorb them to increase their stats. Red orbs were for strength, green for physique, blue for mental strength and yellow for agility. Zhang Zi had received a blue orb and absorbing it would increase his mental fortitude by 0.01 points as it was only low rank. But he wants to save it and sell it later. He receives a message on his system screen that he can now summon a lava turtle. He clicks the button and a turtle really appears. It has the same stats as the original monster but it is friendly with its master. Seeing it, Zhang Zi becomes really happy and starts cuddling with it like it was his pet and even the turtle likes it. Some other newbies are struggling with a rabbit. But then Zhang Zi appears riding a turtle. All of them are surprised. But he is wearing a mask so they can't know the real identity of the man who could tame monsters. The newbies continue their fight and the rabbit goes into berserk mode after it reaches 50% HP. But then other rabbits join him and the newbies run for their lives. Zhang Zi is enjoying the view from the turtle's back when the newbies run past him and warn him to run away too. He does not know what was chasing them and is shocked when he finds three angry rabbits chasing him. He dodges one of the rabbits that attacked him and asks his turtle to smack them away with its tail. He also attacks them with arrows and finds that the turtle's attack was much more powerful than his. But fighting three rabbits at once is too much for the slow turtle. Zhang Zi gets off it and starts to divide the turtles so that they don't overpower his summoned beast. The battle continues and all the monsters are nearing the end of their health bar. Zhang Zi sees that his turtle could die if he got hit once more and asks him to go back to the summoning array but the turtle surprises him by leveling up. Its HP is restored and its stats have also increased on reaching level 2. Zhang Zi is happy and the turtle easily defeats the rabbits that were nearing their end already. He receives three more blue orbs and can now summon the rabbits too. He immediately brings out all three of them and now he has a formidable team of beasts. But he gets a notification from the instructors. All the students had to come back to the altar immediately. There is an important announcement for them. It had been a few days and all the students were still unharmed. But the instructors think that they could not handle the floor boss yet and had asked an elite hunter to show them the ropes. Liu Ying, who used the nickname Moon Shadow in the Dimon Territory was going to beat the Dark Shadow Wolf for them. She was the senior at Zhang Zi's school who had awakened an S-rank talent. She was as beautiful as she was strong and all the newbies gossip about her. She invites them to join her team using their systems. Zhang Zi finds that her stats have all been hidden except the fact that she uses a sword. He hopes that he gets a chance to defeat the boss himself. But he decides to not summon his beast as it would only cause confusion with so many people around. As Moon Shadow leads the party, she effortlessly defeats three monsters in one smooth motion. Everyone is impressed and thinks that they are no match for her. Soon, the team reaches the lair of the Dark Shadow Wolf. She shows them the portal it would use to come to them and she would take it out. But as soon as it enters through the portal, a thick fog covers the area and no one can see anything. The wolf is only interested in the strongest person there and attacks her first. But Moon Shadow elegantly dodges its attack and kills it using her graceful sword technique. Her talent was the skill Light Blade Slash. She could use it to slash an enemy three times and the damage would be increased with each slash. And it was still at level 1, as she would level her skill up, it would become much more powerful. All the newbies have obtained the key to enter the second floor thanks to her. There are a lot of orbs that have dropped from the wolf. She tells them that the boss would respawn after an hour and they should move quickly. But her real team is waiting for her on the fifth floor of the demon territory. They are planning to hunt the boss today and she is their main damage dealer. She tells the newbies that she would be leaving them but another portal starts appearing behind her. How could that happen? The respawn time was one hour. But she can feel that the aura of the monster is different from the wolf. She is proven right when a much more powerful monster comes out of the portal. She will now have to face an elite dark shadow wolf. But an elite monster was five times stronger than a normal monster. Moon Shadow doubts if she can defeat the elite boss but she tells the newbies to run away while they had a chance. 
The wolf comes at her but she is able to dodge its attack. She uses her skill light blade slash but it cannot do enough damage to slow the wolf down. Its defense was in another league, but that is not all the elite boss is capable of. It is faster than her and attacks her with its claw. The attack inflicts bleeding damage on her and she would die if she did not take measures to stop the bleeding. But that will not be possible while she is fighting the wolf. Zhang Zi gets greedy on thinking about the elite dark shadow wolf. He thinks that if he is able to summon a monster like that, he could clear even the higher floors easily. Moon Shadow is facing the wolf and is injured and weakened due to her blood loss. She cannot even activate her skill because of her weakness and the wolf still has a lot of HP left. The wolf attacks her and she falls to the ground. She feels that her end is near as the wolf comes to bite her. But its face is hit by arrows and he turns to find another hunter taunting him. Zhang Zi or Rakshasa was there to lure it away so that he could fight it using his summon beast. Moon Shadow warns him that he should run away but he is successful in getting the wolf away from her. She thinks that the young man would die and she would be responsible for his death. But Zhang Zi is not fast enough to keep the distance between himself and the wolf for long. He decides to summon his beasts immediately as the wolf is about to attack him. But Moon Shadow is not ready to let him die just yet. She decides to stop her bleeding and then find the wolf. But she is not going to be alone this time. Her team comes to the first floor to support her. They heal her and tell her that it was too risky to go against an elite boss all alone. But they are surprised on finding that the wolf is not nearby. She tells them that a newbie lured it away from her. Zhang Zi's beasts are fighting against the monster and they seem to have the upper hand. The three level 1 rabbits and one level 2 lava turtle are attacking the wolf continuously. But the wolf is still not to be underestimated and wounds all four summoned beasts when he attacks. Zhang Zi tries to coordinate their attacks so that they survive his attack while damaging him. One violent rabbit also levels up and the fight gets even more intense. Zhang Zi loses the two level 1 rabbits as they die. But the remaining two beasts finish the job and defeat the elite boss. The item dropped by the wolf are really good. There are four medium quality blue magic soul orbs and two pieces of equipment. The C rank wolf fang necklace will boost his mental fortitude by 0.5 points and the C rank wolf bone dagger would grant him additional attack power. Zhang Zi decides to keep the necklace and sell the dagger because it did not suit his fighting style. He summons the elite wolf and its stats are really amazing. But it is getting too late and Zhang Zi decides that he should go home for now. His sister would be worried about him and he needed to rest too. Moon Shadow's team finds the location where the newbie fought the elite boss. They can only find the claw marks of the wolf but no sign of the boy. They think that the wolf killed him, it was the only reasonable explanation. But Moon Shadow declares that she would find out more about him after she contacted his class teacher. If he had died, she would be the one to bear responsibility. But Zhang Zi is completely fine and happy. He has collected a lot of magic soul orbs from the monsters he hunted and decides to sell them online. They were worth a lot of money and he keeps only a few for his use. His sister was alive due to an artificial kidney. That drained all the money they had, but now with his talent, he could make sure that she would stay healthy. Zhang Zi also works as a janitor in the gym as a part-time job, but he is planning to quit it once the money from monster hunting starts coming in. He decides to go to the demon territory again and get a team of 10 monsters to summon, but he is worried about his sister who seems to go to her friend's place a lot recently. He is hunting monsters when he notices a group of low-ranked newbies being chased by some people. One of them is a rich kid and they want to kidnap him and demand ransom from his family in the real world. They catch the boy and the two girls with him and start harassing him to tell his family's details. But Zhang Zi shoots an arrow at the kidnapper's hand, stopping him from harming the victim. He taunts the kidnappers and runs away. They get really furious and start chasing him. Their victims were caught in a skill and could not free themselves. They chase Zhang Zi and when he runs to a narrow pathway, they think that he made a mistake. They surround him at a dead end and the leader of the kidnappers says that he would take his time tormenting Zhang Zi. But before they can do anything to harm him, Zhang Zi uses his summoning technique and releases all ten beasts he can summon. The kidnappers are scared seeing so many monsters spawn at their location and start to run back to where they came from. But the most powerful summon is standing there to block their route. They realize that they walked into a trap on seeing the elite dark shadow wolf. Zhang Zi has no mercy on them and orders his summoned beasts to kill them. He finds quite a few useful things with the kidnappers. The thing that interests him the most is the berserker talisman, which could make its target get unhinged. He decides to keep it for later. The three people that were caught by the kidnappers are freed and come to thank the hunter who saved them. The rich kid was actually Zhang Zi's classmate and he offers to reward him with a lot of money. But he declines the offer as it would reveal his true identity to everyone. With that Zhang Zi, a hunter nicknamed Rakshasa leaves for the second floor. What challenges await him on the next floor and what kind of monsters can he defeat there will be shown in the next video. And there are other unanswered questions like what did Moon Shadow find out or the secret behind his sister's actions. Let us find out their answers in the next video.